Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. Uh, my name is Leroy and today we're going to go through the POA O Levels 2019 Paper 2 Question 1. Now this is a very important question, it carries 20 marks and it's bound to come out in every year's examination. Uh, 2019 is syllabus 7175 but it's still relevant for current year syllabus or current uh, syllabus from 2021 onwards because the question is by and large the same. So um, hope this is helpful for you. Um, now before I get into this, uh, if you have a friend who is, you think can benefit from se working sessions like this, please feel free to uh, recommend this to your friend and um, also don't forget to subscribe to this channel, put on a notif notification bell so that when I get new contents uploaded here, you'll get notified on it. Alright, so let's get into this. Um, these type of questions, they come in a trial balance uh, and there are some additional information and there's two outputs. The uh, income statement for the year, which in current period or in 2021 onwards, it's known as the statement of financial performance. And the second output is the balance sheet, which in 2021 syllabus onwards, it's known as the statement of financial position. But by and large, they are the same thing. Okay, so to um, tackle these questions, you, you, there are three important steps which would build a great foundation for you and I'm going to show them to you today. Um, so firstly, the first step, you need to understand whether these items in the trial balance, are they relating to output A or output B? And output A is the statement of financial performance, output B is statement of financial position, right? So I'm going to go through at, uh, this one by one and I'm going to put A or B uh, in, at the side here. And those that goes to go, those, that, those items that will go to A, they are revenues, income or expense related. Those items that go to B are asset liability or equity related. So let's look up for them. Motor vehicles and assets. So I'm going to put B, accumulated depreciation is related to motor vehicle inventories and asset, cash advance and asset. Sales revenues is revenue, so it's A. Sales returns is A. Cost of sales is an expense, it's A. Trade receivables is a current asset, it's B. Trade payables, liability, B. Allowance uh, for impairment of trade receivables is related to the receivable section, so I'll put B. Discount received is an income. Uh, commission income, it's an income. Rent is an expense. Motor vehicle expense, wages expense. Uh, general expense, discount allowance is an expense. Drawings is equity related, so I'm going to put it as B. And capital is B. So that's the first step. Very straightforward, very simple. Let's look to the next step. The next step is to tackle these additional information, right? And you want to uh, know what are the journal entries that will uh, come out of this additional information and these journal entries will affect these balances here in the trial balance or they will result in new accounts created that you have to add in the output A and output B, the statement of financial performance or financial position. So let's look at it one by one and, and take it from here. Yeah. So uh, the first one tells us wages and salaries at the end of the period were still owing. All right. So then if it's still owing, that means you have to take into account a payable wages and salary payables, and these are uh, liabilities. And a liability is credit in nature, so if you want to account for additional wages and salaries owing, then a liability that's credit in nature, you've got to credit that. So you've got to credit wages and salaries, payables, uh, 1250. And what do you debit? You debit the wages and salaries expense because you have additional wages and salaries expense that you have not taken into account in this trial balance and you need to account for that because they were owing still all right so wages and salaries expense okay or wages and salaries that's what it's known here the one two five seven then uh the next thing is the rent expense for this uh rent expense here covers a period until October 2019. So this uh, financial year is uh, until the end of to April 2019. So if it covers until October 2019, uh, that means how many months is prepaid? There's uh, May, June, July, August, September, October. Right. So six months is prepaid. So this period is paid for 18 months. So what we do is we have to recognize a prepayment. 
um, a prepaid rent and prepayments are uh, assets and assets debit in nature so if you want to recognize an additional prepayment you debit the asset prepaid rent and you calculate the prepaid rent by taking this value 14,400 you divide it by 18 months because that's what you you know paid it for and you multiply by 6 which is the prepaid uh, number of months a number of months that has been prepaid for so that's your prepaid amount 4008 and you credit your rent because rent you want to bring this number down it's not so much this is representing 18 months but your financial statements you've got to put it for 12 months right so you're going to reduce the rent by that six months that you calculated as prepayment and that's going to be 4000 a now why do i credit rent because rent is an expense and expense is debit in nature so when you want to increase an expense then you debit it if you want to reduce the expense you credit it because it's debit in nature right so that's how that's the rationale for that now the next one is motor vehicles depreciation 20 percent using straight uh, reducing metal balance so depreciation is a standard uh journal entry depreciation expense motor vehicle and credit accumulated uh depreciation motor vehicle right and this is uh, reducing method will take the net book value of the asset which is cost is 62,000 uh, less 22,320 right okay so that's what I have here multiplied by 20% okay so reducing method balance is taking the net book value of the asset at the beginning of the period multiplied by the depreciation rate so the net book value is the cost of the asset less the accumulated depreciation before this depreciation entry is done, right? So that's the, the amount and this is what we get. Okay, all right, the next number four, sales invoice 2000 has been completely omitted from the books. So you have to add this into the book. So this sales invoice, what's the double entry for sales invoice? Usually sales invoice will uh, have a debit trade receivables this is a standard credit sales uh, journal entries right uh, and credit sales revenues okay and uh, $2,000 right now uh, a sales invoice would uh, be issued to a customer and usually the customer will pay it later and if that's the case that means uh, trade receivables is crystallized because trade receivables represents uh, amount that customers owe you so customers would owe you more and uh, therefore you debit trade receivables and trade receivables is an asset it's debit in nature so if you want an increase in the asset to represent an increase in the asset then you have to debit it uh, similarly sales revenues is credit in nature um, and if you want to you want to signal that the sales revenues has uh, increased or record a higher level of sales revenues then you credit it as what we've done here okay so next debts of 545 what considered uncollectible so in here they've already uh, I've seen this yes allowance is already signaling that you know you have uh, prepared for 340 worth of debt that are uncollectible but they say that no this 340 is no more no more correct it should be 545 so you want to change this allowance to 545 allowance is credit in nature so you you credit allowance because you want to increase it for impairment of uh, I'm going to use short form more of uh, trade receivables and this is going to be from uh, you want it to be 545 in the end right so it's going to be 545 uh, less what the balance here is so you got accredited by 205 and this 205 will be added to this 340 to have the ending balance of 545 now what do you debit you when, wherever you credit or debit the allowance for impairment of trade receivables you always debit it to this account right uh, you always debit it to impairment loss on trade receivables and this is a account that goes into the statement of financial per, per, performance right so this is 205 as well okay now um the next one is commission income receivables was 250 
fifty. So commission income is an income. If you still have some uh, additional income that you have not accounted for, then you want to increase the income uh, position. So you credit commission income because income is credit in nature. So you want to increase this. You got to credit it. Then you debit commission income receivables. Okay because that's an asset, right? So you debit it as well to recognize a higher amount of the asset that is due to you. Um, cost of repairs or personal car or 1,500 was included in motor vehicle expenses. So uh, the owner's uh, personal car expense was included in the business personal uh, motor vehicle expense of 3610. So you can't do that, right? Because that's his own expenses. So that's considered a drawings. So you are going to recognize higher drawings and you're going to reduce the motor vehicle expenses. Uh, motor vehicle expense. And motor vehicle expense is an expense, it's debit in nature. So to reduce it, you credit it. So you credit it by how much? 1,500 and the drawings will be increased by 1,500. Lastly, on the last day of the month of the year, he uh, owner bought a computer, 350 on credit. This has not been recorded and no depreciation needs to be charged. So you just have to record the fixed asset, right? So fixed asset is an asset, so it's debit in nature to record this. You got to debit your, let's call it office equipment, right? Because computers will be under office equipment and credit other payables. Well, we don't credit trade payables because trade payables result from a buy and sell of inventory and only inventory. Anything else that you uh, buy and sell, uh, sorry, uh, anything else that you buy um, on credit would be credited to other payables. Um, and only if you buy inventory on credit, it's credited to trade payable. So remember that. All right, so uh, I will finish the uh, step three uh, in the next installment of this video. But uh, for now, step one and two is there. Try and repeat this and see whether you get to the same conclusions. And if you don't, um, try and see, read, re watch this video and see whether you get, uh, you, it clarifies uh, your, your doubts or, or your question. If not, send me a question to poa for you at gmail.com. My email address is always on the left of these sheets I work with or send me a question in this channel okay if you like this video put a thumbs up and recommend this to your friend if you find that someone needs it um, and you know I'll be happy to uh, uh, that this video get shared you know to more and more people all right it's always a pleasure and thank you so much